This PowerPoint is a technically a review of geometric solids and area. So we're going to look at different solids, but we're also going to look at what their formulas for area are. So we have certain solids. A solid is a limited portion of a space bound by a closed surface, and it can be mixed into two things, a polyhedron and a curved round body solid. So here are some examples of polyhedron, and here are some examples of curved round bodies. And this is what we're going to be looking at in terms of what we're going to find the area of. Um, so you need to remember that polyhedron are just solid, like plain faces, flat. Whereas a curved round body, I mean, it's in the title, right? It's, um, it's curved. So there's got to be some kind of like circular shape to it. What you need to remember is that the lateral area plus the area of the bases is equal to the total surface area. The lateral area is the area that is around the solid. And the base of the solid is the bottom, usually in the shape of a regular polygon or a circle. So when you have a solid, and we'll look at this more in classes, when you're given a solid, you have either one or two bases depending on the solid that you're looking at. And the bases are always in the sh same shape. Um, and either it's a regular polygon or a circle. So you're going to have to remember your um, areas of polygons. So for any prism, a rectangular, triangular prism, a cube, in a prism, the lateral sides are the rectangles and the two bases are in the shape of a regular polygon. So the lateral sides are rectangles. The formula is the area of lateral is equal to the perimeter of the base times the height. And the total area is when you add the lateral area plus the area of the bases. And I put a note here, prisms have two bases, so you could do two times area of base if that helps you. In a right circular cylinder here, um, it's composed of three faces actually. So two discs and one rectangle. This is the circumference of the base down here. So the rule we deduct from this net, um, in a right circular cylinder, the bases are parallel and the discs are congruent. The lateral face is a rectangle that is perpendicular to the bases. And the height corresponds to the distance between the two bases. So that's the height, the circumference of the base, and you have two bases that are in the form of circles. So. The area of the bases is um, pi r squared, but there's two of them, so we have two pi r squared. And the lateral area is the area of the rectangle. The total area corresponds to the sum of the area of the bases and the lateral face. In other words, you would have to add the areas of the disks and the rectangle together. So we say that the total area of a right circular cylinder is the area of base plus the lateral area. So there are two bases, so we do two times pi r squared plus the lateral area is the air is the perimeter of the base which is 2 pi r times the height right because the area of a rectangle and is it's a rectangle but in our case it's in the shape of a circle so it's 2 pi r if we plug everything in based on the example in the corner with a radius of 6 and a height of 9 we get 565.49 centimeters squared very important that you put the square there what about cones and pyramids well here's a cone um, in a cone, you have the height from the apex to the center of the circle. And on the side here, you have the slant height. The slant height is very important. It's very important to know the difference between slant height and height. You also need to remember that the area of a circle is pi r squared and the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r or pi times diameter. Pyramids have the same net, meaning they have a slant height, they have a height, but their base is never a circle. It can be in the shape of any regular polygon. Most often it's in the shape of a square, but sometimes you'll see pyramids with triangular bases, pentagonal bases, even hexagonal bases. This is the general rule for the lateral area of a cone and pyramid. It's the perimeter of one base times the slant height, not the height, the slant height divided by two. For cones, this would be 2 pi r because cones have a base of a circle. The lateral area and the area of one base gives you the total area. And I need to note the reason why there are two stars there is that cones and pyramids only have one base, whereas the prisms had two. 
for a sphere that looks something like this, basic rule, the area of the lateral is the same as the area of the total, which is 4 pi r squared. So over here we have a ball with a radius of 7 centimeters. Um, plugging it into our 7 squared for r, we get that the uh, area of this sphere or ball is approximately 615.75 centimeters squared. Now this slide will be your helpful slide. It has all of the rules that you're going to need to know um, in terms of area of solids. So I give you the area of a cube. Cubes, the lateral area are just four times the side squared. They're cubes. They have the same side length and the total surface area is six times the side squared. For your right prism, I give you the rules here. Same for pyramid and cone. Same for sphere, but I also give you the rule for a hemisphere. A hemisphere is half the area of a sphere, so if you divide 4 pi r squared by 2, you get 2 pi r squared. More than that, you are going to need to remember how to convert. So for units of length, which you've seen before, you have to multiply or divide by 10 depending on which way you're going. If you're going from big to small, you multiply by 10, and if you're going from small to big, you divide by 10. And I'm sure you've already heard of this, um, not necessarily an acronym, but this saying to help you remember, King Henry died, mother didn't care much, um, kilometers, hectometers, um, decameters, meters, decimeters, um, centimeters, and millimeters. More than that, though, you need to know your units of area. So when you're converting um, kilometers squared or all of these units squared, instead of going by tens, you're going by 100. Same principle, though. From big to small, you multiply, and from small to big, you divide, but in this case, by 100. 